Good morning, everyone. Am I am I audible to all of you? If one of one or two can respond. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, I'm is Mr. Apurbo is there or? Yes, sir. I am here, sir. As the TMA okay, explorer. Okay. okay. So you let me know when to start, huh? So okay, I'm sir. here. I have joined. Yes, sir. I have seen, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have seen, sir. So I will let. No, you know, I have been. I have been traveling uh, last few days, and uh, you know, here and there, and couldn't prepare my slides. So I'll be taking you through the like the board work in class. Huh? So I'll be doing. Yes, sir. No problem. There will be no problem, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think sir your department students also join no I have sent I don't know because these people also you know uh, last few days they are uh, uh, semester due to semester break they are traveling or something I don't know whether I think they had forgotten <laughs> Yeah that could be could be okay, sir. sir can you start already 25 or 26 people join can you start Yeah it's up to you yeah okay, you can, sir. okay if sir. you tell okay, me sir. to start I'll start I have no problem Please start the session, Suparna. Mathematics compares the most diverse phenomena and discovers the secret analogies that unite them. Good morning to all presents over here in these virtual platforms. My name is Suparna Dash and I welcome you all in the day two session one of five days national mathematical webinar organized by Tripura Mathematical Association on the occasion of National Mathematics Day celebration 2021. Now we have the invited talk by Dr. Shoikut Mukherjee sir from National Institute of Technology Meghalaya in this first session. Sir is an associate professor in the department of mathematics at NIT Meghalaya. Sar has a specialization in operator theory, functional analysis, and probability distribution. Sar has completed his PhD from University of Wyoming, USA. He is also a former HOD of Department of Mathematics and also, also the associate dean NIT Meghalaya. Sar has more than 15 years teaching experience in the Department of Mathematics in different institutes. Sar had also attended so many national and international conferences. Sar is also the member of American Mathematical Society and the life member of IMS and ISCA. So the title of today's talk is Vector Spaces. Welcome you, sir, in this virtual platform. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shuparna. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I, uh, Mr. Apurbo contacted me like uh, about 10 days back and asked me to give a talk so i appreciated the initiative that you have taken and thought to share my you know uh, uh, knowledge uh, in, in mathematics so i was asked to give a lecture on vector space which is very fundamental and uh, i don't know the audience here i see some 20 p ma 20 d s ma uh, are these like you know uh, Undergraduate student or postgraduate student? Uh, yes, sir. Undergraduate student. UG and PG, both are there. Okay, okay. So I, I that's what I had the information. So keeping that in mind, I you know plan to give a talk. You know, vector space is very fundamental. So basically, my talk is very uh, you can say basic or fundamental. So you probably have seen these things before. And you know, uh, learning never ends. So you can fill up the missing link if you have any uh, through my talk. Huh? So I'll be uh, taking you through, uh, like the, as I said just few minutes back, like a board work, uh, so that I can write in the, my tab. And then, if you want, you can take notes, or if you want me to share this, uh, I'll be probably able to share later the things that I'll be writing. Okay. So, but the, most of the things are, you know, available in any uh, any uh, books of uh, linear algebra or online resource materials also. But uh, we'll just have a interaction through this discussion. And if you have questions and any any other discussion to be done, we can discuss after the talk. Okay. So, how much time I have uh, as a whole, Apurva? Sir, so forty-five minutes to one hour. Okay. Okay, so, okay. 
so let's let's begin then i'll uh, you know stop this video so that i can start my slide presentation is that okay yes sir yes sir no problem sir okay okay thank you please let me know if you can see my screen is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay in case it's you know okay fine thank you yeah you, you know probably how to pin the the screen so that you can see it in a uh, full screen or something okay depending on what type of uh, mode you are using like a tablet or mobile or laptop okay so i will be talking about uh, as i said this is the topic of the today's presentation is vector space and vector space is very fundamental to the concept or to the notion of linear algebra okay so without vector space understanding vector space nicely we cannot go ahead and discuss linear algebra and uh, so there are this uh, space in general we sometimes we misinterpret it's not uh, like in the space we know in physics okay so it's a kind of different thing it's like a, a in a set uh, with a structure with some certain structure oh by the way i'll be Uh, this notation i'll be using for with in short huh so is my habit so i cannot change over the you know within an hour so so set with a certain structure that's what the space means and vector we have sometimes we misinterpret or we understand we tend to understand that uh, vector means like n people but uh, a vector is more general than n tuples which covers n tuples also uh, like in rn elements but it's more general than that so so i'll straight ahead go ahead and uh, say, uh, define vector space so here is the definition of vector space i think i'll be using a black color so that might be more convenient so Uh, so so we consider v a non empty set feel free to stop me okay because otherwise you know i'll be this is the difficulty that we have been facing in online mode you know one person speaks and nobody talks so sometimes we feel i'm just uh, sitting alone and speaking yeah so uh, feel free to stop me if you have any query okay or if it is not visible then uh, or some some What's other technical difficulty sir? let me know Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll access. Okay, sure. So we we uh, assume a non-empty set, and F is a field. Okay, I hope you know the definition of field. So it's a field, and uh, later we'll see the elements of this. Uh, the elements are known as vectors, and these elements we'll be calling as scalars. Okay. so with two operations one is vector addition and we denote it by this notation which is a mapping from this product space v cross v so that means it takes two elements from v and goes into v and is defined as it takes two elements u v from this product space and maps to the element which is defined as u plus v okay so this is the vector addition and second one is scalar multiplication and this is also uh, denoted by a dot and it's a mapping again from uh, the scalar field f cross v so it's a, again from the product space one element coming from f one coming from v into v so is 
it takes element alpha from f and a v from v and maps to element which is we sometimes we write alpha dot v or al simply alpha v which is an element of v okay and we say v is a vector space over the field f if this operation satisfies certain properties and there are a long list of eight properties i'll just uh, uh, write down quickly those u plus v equals to v plus u for all u v belongs to v so this is like a commutativity of vector addition then we have uh, associativity u plus v plus w equals to u plus v plus w which is same as u plus v plus w okay for all u v belongs to u v w belongs to v then we have uh, there exists a zero element in v such that zero plus u equals to u plus zero equals to u for all u belongs to v there exists a inverse for every element. So there exists a, a for, for all u belongs to v, there exists an element which we are calling it as negative u belongs to v such that u plus negative u, which is same as by the commutativity negative u plus u also equals to zero element. These four properties one can think this as V is an abelian group with respect to vector addition, with respect to vector addition. Okay. okay. These four, four properties one can remember like that. There are four more properties and which involves the scalar field now. So what it says that for all u belongs to v and for all alpha beta belongs to the scalar field f we have alpha beta times u equals to alpha times beta u okay so this is basically uh, uh, this is something like a compatibility of uh, field multiplication field element multiplication and vector element vector multiplication then we have, uh, you know, assuming that one is the uh, multiplicative identity in the field for all u belongs to v, one u equals to u. Then we have uh, for, uh, these two are distributive laws, two more distributive laws left. So for all alpha belongs to f and for all u v belongs to v, uh, we have alpha times u plus v equals to alpha u plus alpha v. And same thing for this time alpha beta belongs to f and for all u belongs to v, alpha plus beta u equals to alpha u plus beta u. So these are the um, scalar multiplication can be distributed with vector addition and scalar addition. So these are the four eight properties if the operations that we talked about above, the vector addition and scalar multiplication satisfy, then we call this V as a vector space uh, over the field F. And uh, the elements of F are called scalars, the elements of V are called vectors. Okay? Now, uh, we can quickly recall a few uh, examples, but anyway, one uh, uh, important thing, we cannot, uh, you know, sometimes we ignore the field the role of field, what uh, it plays, we sometimes ignore when we say vector space, but we should not do that. Vector space without field doesn't make sense, okay? So, uh, a few examples we can simply think of, uh, you know, if F is a field, you can think uh, it's a number field like R or C, you can think, then Fn is a vector space over F. Okay, for example, Rn over R, Cn over C. Okay, 
but there are again cn can be thought as a vector space over r also cn can be thought as a vector space over r so these two are different concepts okay because the dimension when you go to dimension you will see that the dimension will change okay uh, there are uh, other fields like the you know other examples of uh, vector spaces for example uh, the set of polynomials uh, over c you can think uh, of uh, dimension of a degree less than equals to n this collection forms a vector space okay and uh, we can think of set up all you need to define the uh, those algebraic operations as uh, multiplications and uh, scalar multiplication and vector addition which we know what to do with polynomials okay so that's why i'm not uh, mentioning it here so set up all n cross n you can say real matrices also form vector space okay so uh, we'll quickly move on to the definition of subspace so if let's say v is a vector space v a vector space let's write down like that suppose v is a vector space over f okay suppose huh? and let's say u is a subset of v okay we say u is a subspace or vector subspace or subspace of v if vector addition those two operations and scalar multiplication are closed okay so it it really means that if you take u and v belongs to u and alpha belongs to f then u plus v belongs to u alpha u belongs to u so these are closed u is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication that's what it means okay now one can one can note that u itself is a vector space over the same field f okay okay so i have a few exercise problems for you you may want to try if u and v are let's say two subspaces some for some given vector space or let's say subspaces of w over the field f then u plus v u intersection v are also subspaces so that one can check huh? one can try so uh, i can ask you also that uh, is you can think of this is u union v given u and v are subspaces is u union v is a subspace do you know the answer anyone am i audible not in general sir not all in general no. can you give an example when u union v is not can you give an example of u and v where the union is not a, a subspace example sign r2 if you if you take x axis as a subspace and yes. y axis as a subspace right 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 then their union is not a 
if you choose x axis and y axis as your u and v then their union is not a subspace correct okay so in fact what happens you their union is uh, uh, given to subspaces uh, their union is also a subspace if and only if one is sitting with another okay if and only if u is a subset of v or v is a subset of u okay or subspace of u the other way around okay u is a subspace of v or v is a subspace of u then only it happens okay so we'll quickly go take you through the you know few, or recall few uh, definitions of linear combination so if you have a, a collection of vectors vn in v and uh, uh then uh, this alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 dot dot, dot alpha n vn is of course a element of v where alpha i's are coming from f the field then uh, this term is known as a linear combination of those collection of vectors v1 through vn okay and for uh, another similar definition for a spanning set so we say that given let's say uh, v1 through vn are given okay let's call it s okay then we use the subset notation okay so suppose we have a subset of n n vectors from v then the span of s is uh, denoted by is a set of or uh, defined by set of all possible linear combinations of s so you create all possible linear combinations by varying the uh, you know scalars alphas uh, and uh, you construct uh, the collection and that collection is known as A spanning, a spanning of S or span set, uh, span of S. Okay, okay, and uh, we talk about linear independency. So linear independency. So, so we assume that V is a vector space over F, and then again we assume as before V one through V n belongs to V. and then we say that if okay if this summation a linear combination like i goes from 1 through n alpha i vi equals to 0 possible for some alpha i belongs to f only if alpha i equals to 0 for all i then we say that this collection is linearly independent right right okay and for the linear dependency we know that this collection v1 through vn is said to be linearly dependent if it is not linearly independent so in other words what happen so that means if there exist one alpha says that alpha 1 v1 plus dot dot alpha n well you can put alpha i v i also here dot dot alpha n v n equals to 0 so if this linear combination becomes zero for some non zero scalars if that happens then you can we say that this set is linearly dependent dependent okay. yes also we can see that in other words we can visualize it this way in case suppose we assume that let's say this alpha i is non zero okay for linearly dependent case and in that case i can write vi as negative 1 over alpha i and uh, you know summation uh, i goes from 1 through n or j goes from 1 through n j not equals to i alpha j vj correct right na because alpha i is non zero i assume 
So if I have such a situation, it really means that is equivalent to say that VI belongs to span of V1 or VI. 1 less than equals to I less than equals to N, I not equals to, or J, let's say, I'm just, J not equals to I. So VI linearly dependent means this one vector is sitting in the span of the remaining vectors, okay? Or you can write in terms of linear combination of the other vectors. That's what it means. Well, there are some important facts you must be knowing. A vector, if it contains a collection of vectors, if it contains a zero vector, it must be linearly dependent. It's easy to check. You can take a non-zero coefficient with zero vector. You can still make the sum zero, okay? And any, uh, if you have a uh, dependent set of vectors, then its superset is also linearly dependent. If you have a linearly independent set of vectors, its subset also linearly independent. Correct? So, so you know, this discussion of uh, this, uh, linear combination spanning and uh, dependency independency will lead eventually to the concept of base, basis of a vector space, okay, which is very important and fundamental as we, you know, we can analogously think of uh, uh, how prime numbers are important to think of the uh, numbers, uh, integers, okay. So how the prime numbers decompose the integers. Same thing, if you know the basis, you know everything of the vector space. So basis is very important and for that we require the spanning set and independency. But one, of course, before I move on to the, to the basis, what you should understand that all we talk about here is finite sum. Everything we are talking about finite sum, okay? There might be an infinite collection. I just wanted to mention, let's say I have an infinite set of vectors. A vector space, can I ask you something? A vector space can, can contain finitely many elements? Can a vector space contain a finitely many elements? Yes, sir, I think. Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, no. I think. Okay, the answer is if you say yes, also you are correct. No, also you are correct. Because you see, the, the it contains finitely many vectors. Only one such vector space exists. Can you tell me which one? The zero vector space, the trivial vector space. This is also a vector space which contains only one element which is finitely many. All remaining other vector spaces contains, it depends on the field. If the field has, you know, infinitely many, in general, we talk about field as R or C, then it contains infinitely many choices of the field elements. So by varying the field elements, you can create, you know, by the properties of vector space, you can create infinitely many options. In fact, uncountably infinitely many options you can create. Okay? Take it so it it can it contains in general it contains non trivial vector spaces contains infinitely many elements so if i have a infinite set of we can always construct an infinite set of vectors from a vector space of course so if you have an infinite set of vectors then uh, let's call it s so what when when do we say that is linearly independent s is linearly independent what does it understand by that See, as I, why I'm saying this, because all this concept that I discussed here is a, you know, a concept that talks about a finite sum, not infinite sum. So therefore, I cannot simply extend this idea to the case of infinite, okay? So what will, how do you understand when S is linearly independent, okay? So S is linearly independent by this, we understand that. Can someone help me? Every... subset every finite subset of S is linearly independent. And S is linearly dependent. By this we understand, because finite, so we understand what? Then we can use the finite combination and use this definition. But when you say infinite set, we talk about every finite subset we choose and we see whether it's linearly independent or not. But for the dependency, 
S is linearly dependent if there exists a finite linearly dependent subset of S. If there exists a finite set, finite subset of S which is linearly, linearly dependent, then S becomes linearly dependent as opposed to this a negation of the what we discussed here. Okay, just opposite to that. Okay, so coming back to the finite again. So we talk about the basis and dimension because infinity makes things a little bit complicated. Okay, so we'll first understand the, the first means I don't know whether I can talk about infinite case, but basis and dimension quickly. Okay, basis there are many ways we can uh, we can understand or we know. So basis one can think that a set S is a basis for a vector space V if S is linearly independent and it's a spanning set. So that means span we defined before all linear possible linear combination of vectors of S is equals to V. If these two things happen together simultaneously, then we call it a basis for V, okay? And then the uh, number of elements of S is uh, called the dimension. Of v. Okay, so uh, well, of course, uh, uh, the uh, the basis is not unique. There might be many different. That's why I said is a basis, but the dimension is unique. Okay, so uh, there may be different ways to construct basis as long as it satisfies uh, these two properties. But there are equivalent definitions of a basis also, which we may uh, which may help in different uh, proof. Uh, to use the, such concept. So I'll just mention it quickly. So a basis has two different type of definition one you know, can use. One is uh, S is, is a basis if it is a maximal spanning set. Equivalently, S is a basis if it is Minimal independent set. Do you know the concept of maximal and minimal? Uh, the maximal, I'll just uh, don't want to discuss much on this, but I'll just tell you quickly maximal minimal. Uh, comes in a post set, okay, partially ordered set. So you have a, a relation which you can, uh, which is a, a post set. And uh, so that you can, whenever you can compare, you can tell this is the biggest element, then we call it a maximal element. So basically, you may have, you, you know, geometrically, you may have elements which are, these elements are comparable. I can say this is bigger than this, this is bigger than this, okay. But uh, this element and this element may not be comparable. But along this may be another collection of elements which are comparable. So these two elements can be comparable. These elements can be comparable. Okay. So the biggest one, whenever I say that these are comparable, if I compare with all the comparable elements, and this is the biggest one, this element is known as maximal element, similarly here. Okay. And then again, whenever we can compare, so among all comparable elements, if the, the minimum one is called the minimal element, okay? Here the, the relation the here, size of the element. tell me again. That, that means it depends on the size of the element. Whatever the element size will be greater, it will be maximal. Uh, the size, uh, uh, I don't know what you mean by size here. Because it depends, wholly depends how you are defining this relation that less than sign I have used, which you, you know, mm, um, well, I, I'll tell you in this context what I mean. In this context, I mean that this, this less than sign is the subset notation. So if I say, I'll give you an example quickly. Let's say you have a, you know, one zero, 
one one. This is a set, right? In R two, a subset, correct? So let's call it S one. S two. I'm telling this. I'm writing this. One zero, one one, two one. Okay. S three. I'm writing this. One zero, two one, four three. Okay. Now, can you tell me whether S one and S two are comparable or no? Can I say S one is a subset of S two? Yes, sir. Yes. Can I say S one is a subset of S three? No. No. Now no, I write one more. One zero. Can I say S four is a subset of S one? Yes, sir. S four. Yes, sir. Can I say S four is a subset of S three? Yes, sir. So what I'm saying that this S four, S one, S two, this forms a chain. Okay, chain. So the elements are comparable, and in this chain, S two is the biggest element. That's the maximal in this chain, and this is minimal. Okay, set inclusion is our relation here. Okay. But S four again can be compared with S three also, right? And S three cannot be further compared with any other elements in this collection I am talking about. And therefore, this element is the maximal in this collection, and this is the minimal again. So whenever you can compare, the biggest one is the maximal, the smallest one is the minimal. You can think that way. But biggest and smallest completely depends how you talk about how you define this partial ordering, this less than sign, which I am using here the set inclusion. Is that clear? Yes, clear. Huh? Okay. So <laughs> I'll move on. So see, you find something that you might be, you know, it's not very clear to you, but you might. This might be, you know, so they, you should be looking for it. So at least you know something that it was not. You are, you were a little bit. There is some confusion you had. So now you have a scope to search for uh, and look for it. Okay, but and also how this becomes equivalent. Maximal spanning set is basis, and minimal independent set is a basis. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you again quickly uh, uh, how the maximal spanning set just geometrically. So if I have a vector space V, suppose I have a vector space V, and I have a set S. Okay, and I know that span of S equals to V. Okay, ठीक है ना? Yes, sir. It is one theorem, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. But geometrically, do you understand or not? Because you see that what happens if I choose S one is a superset of S, then span of S one is also will span it, right? Yes, sir. If S one contains all the elements that S contains, then span of S one will be also it's a bigger than basically span of. In fact, sp span of S one. is a superset of span of s right and this is already covered the v so this has to be equal all should be equal and equal to v right so therefore what i'm saying that if this happens then s cannot be a basis because it has a superset which also covers right so s cannot be a basis Right now, no. I'm sorry. I think I just uh, mess up here a little bit. Ah, I did a mistake here. It's a minimal spanning set. Okay, I now when I was talking about, I understand minimal spanning set, maximal independent set. Uh, I got confused. Okay, I'll explain quickly again. So, can I say that S also spans? S spans V. Can I? Do you agree with this? From this to 
Agree? Because span of S is V. Do you agree also S1 spans V? Or if you want, I can give you a specific example. Let's say R, R2. If I say S equals to E1, E2, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. Do you agree that S spans V? Now, do you agree S1 also spans V? Right? Any superset containing S also will span V. But this is the minimum one that will span in this connection. If I say S1, S2, S3, then all these will span V. Because S already spanned it, OK? But no, super sub, no subset of S will span it okay and therefore in this chain this is the minimal one that spans v and hence this is the basis so that's why the definition comes like this minimal spanning set who uh, is known as basis and similarly we can see check maximal independent set is known as basis okay so let's uh, let's not discuss much on this otherwise i'll not be able to cover uh, much thing okay so can you tell me quickly, so once you understand basis, uh, can you tell me quickly, what is the dimension of Cn over C? Dimension. Rn over R. If the field elements, scalars are coming from real numbers or scalars are real numbers, can you tell me the dimension of Rn? You know it, right? N plus 1. Oh, no. Oh. No, uh, like R2. Let's say R2. What is the dimension of R2? 2. 2. 2. So Rn will be uh, N only, OK? okay N dimension. N dimension. And CN, CN over C, same, same way, way, okay? N. But if I say CN over R, then do you know? Now your R, okay? Your scalars are R. So think about it, okay? I'll write down here the answer. You think about it, okay? You can choose n equals to 2 and see what happens. Or in fact, n equals to 1 also you can choose and see what happens. OK? OK, I'll let you think of. Oh, another problem I have. So I'll just write down this. Can you tell me what will be the? Rn over Q. If the field elements are coming from rationals, what will be the dimension of it? It's not finite anymore. And this is very challenging, okay? Think about it, okay? Rn over Q yes, is not a finite dimensional space. Yes. Any 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 question you have? No, sir, no, sir. You can answer. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, do you know isomorphism? I just wanted to see. I plan to talk about many things because vector space is not limited to only this. No? So, but I think I'm uh, kind of almost at the end of the time, I guess. Isomorphism. Isomorphism, uh, suppose you have two vector spaces, V1 over F and V2 over F, okay? And isomorphism is a mapping between uh, v, uh, from V1 to V2, which is a bijection, okay? Okay, na? So, so it's like that, T, V1 goes to V2, oh, sorry. Is a bijection. Mm. 
and uh, it of course preserves the vector addition so that's like a homomorphism and preserves vector addition and scalar multiplication those operations okay so what it means basically it's uh, uh, t of v1 plus v2 equals to t v1 plus t v2 like that okay and t of alpha v equals to alpha t v okay so image of the so it's like a linearity of t so uh, such uh, mapping so t you, you, you if you know linear transformation, this is nothing but linear transform. A bijective linear transformation uh, is called an isomorphism. Huh? In other words, bijective linear transformation is known as isomorphism. But the definition changes, OK? If you have more structure in the vector space, this definition will change. Uh, for example, if you have a norm in the vector space, then uh, you require isometry also. That means which preserves the uh, distance from origin okay distance so if the if the two elements in the image uh, in the in the input has the distance d the output also has the same distance so that's called isometry so the isomorphism definition expands when you have more structure in the vector space okay so basically uh, the isomorphism uh, what we understand by isomorphism if you have two different vector spaces and if there if there exists a isomorphism between them then we say that uh, these two spaces v1 and v2 are identical are identical okay are identical same so basically they say they have similar structure okay same so in the same context one can think there's an important theorem so all n dimensional vector space over the same field over same field f are isomorphic or identical so these are identical or isomorphic I identical is not a, a non-mathematical term okay is a non-mathematical term and this is a more mathematical term if there exists isomorphism uh, i'm sorry isomorphic if there exists isomorphism my isomorphism between two vector spaces then these two vector spaces we call it isomorphic and so you can think this as a they are identical okay so all n dimensional vector spaces over the same field f are isomorphic and isomorphic to fn remember we discussed fn before fn is a vector space over f and that dimension also n so all are identical to fn or you can think rn so for example so if i say polynomials of degree let's say pn okay so polynomials of with real coefficients okay of degree less than equals to n so d over r huh? can you tell me what's the dimension n plus 1 n plus 1 very good so n plus 1 and therefore by this theorem pn is identical to what rn plus 1 okay you can there are many ways one can define an isomorphism between pn and rn plus 1 okay so yeah so that's that. So um, uh, there are some results that you know. We, if you have a linearly independent set in a vector space, you can slowly add elements and enhance it to a basis. Okay. Uh, very uh, very important results in uh, uh, linear algebra or vector space. Okay. So, how much time I have? 11.50. I don't want to talk about quotient space. I wanted to talk about dual space, but I'll skip it. I'll just talk about the briefly. Dual space, when uh, dual space comes, um, uh, 
the, with the concept of um, linear functionals, which is a special case of linear transformation. Linear transformation goes from a vector space to a vector space with the same field, but linear functional um, is a, a special type of linear transform uh, when the range uh, goes into um, or sits within the field itself. So it's a V to F. And the linearity like uh, L uh, T of U plus V equals to T U plus T V, T of alpha U equals to alpha T U, all are preserved, all satisfied. Linearity satisfied, so it's like a linear transformation only, but the range sits within the field itself. Those are a special type of linear transformation and known as linear functionals. And if you collect all linear functionals, then we um, call that space as the dual space, okay? So, and dual space, uh, especially in functional, and, uh, you know, uh, we we'll, we'll learn more in detail, and then that eventually has applications, uh, various applications in the context of PDE theory, the existence of the solution uh, of, the, of a given PDE, uh, it has many applications, which leads to different, different concepts of, you know, a, a, a broad or more or not very broad, it's very focused also, maybe you can think one, one can think that way, to research direction on uh, Sobolov's PD theory, Sobolov spaces, uh, base of spaces, uh, like those. Okay, so uh, so dual space is very important, which I planned, but I think I, I it will take time, so I'll avoid it. I'll just talk about quickly infinite dimensional space. Uh, if you give me two, three minutes, infinite dimensional. Because you can see my expertise are in functional analysis, so I work on infinite dimensional spaces. Uh, rather linear algebra, but uh, this or uh, but functional analysis, operator theory, one cannot understand without the understanding of linear algebra and especially vector space, of course. Okay, so I'll I'll tell you uh, quickly what is in infinite dimension. How we define infinite dimensional space? We say that uh, you, you can think about when we say it's a finite, what do we understand? If we say finite, that means we have a basis containing finitely many elements. So in finite dimensional, we can think this way that there exists no finite subset which will span the vector space. So no finite subset will span the vector space. One can think that way. If well, I'll just write down. So a vector space, a vector space is infinite dimensional. This infinite again can be complicated. Infinity itself is complicated because you know infinity uh, one can think is a, um, a, a countable like the number of elements in set of natural numbers, uncountable like the number of elements in set of reals. So infinity also can be complicated. So, but in general, a vector space is said to be infinite dimensional if it cannot be spanned by any finite subset, okay? So, in fact, you cannot choose a basis with finitely many elements, okay? So, for example, I'll just give you one example. For example, the set of all polynomials, okay, okay, is infinite dimensional. I'm not restricting the degree of the polynomial, and hence it becomes, uh, you know, infinite dimension vector space. Okay. Now, um, uh, uh, the usual con concept of basis leads to the uh, concept of Hamel basis, or we call it Hamel basis in the case of infinite dimension. The definition is same only. So we say that a, a set S is a Hamel basis for an infinite dimensional vector space V if every element, if S is linearly independent as being infinite set, you know the definition of in linear independency. 
and uh, if s is linearly independent and s spans v spans means every element of v can be written as a linear finite linear combination finite linear combination of the elements of s then we call it a hamel basis now we could have simply said basis but there is another concept of basis which is uh, does not satisfy the usual definition is a different definition uh, but especially used in norm spaces uh, that is called schauder basis and to distinguish it from that concept uh, this basis has this uh, we have given that name uh, that name is used as hamel basis okay so um, i'll not tell much about hamel basis which is you know uh, due to um, time restriction here also your uh, you know the things that you have uh, uh, gone through so far in your undergrad might not be so easy to understand but i'll just ask you again i'll tell you the hamel basis has two concepts linear independency and spanning that means every v in v can be written as finite linear combination of elements s contains infinite elements but you can write as a finite linear combination of elements of s so you need only finite linear elements of s can you give me an example of hamel basis for this space the set of polynomials can you give me an example of hamel basis for this space am i audible sir so 1 x x square and so on why this will be hamel basis so mm -hmm. this is nicely or correctly said that this set is 1 x x square dot dot, dot is a hamel basis for this collection can you tell me why this is linearly independent right yes that is linearly independent and because you in, can choose any finitely many elements and see that it's uh, linearly independent that's easy to check uh, how about the finite because when you choose a element from v this is my sorry this is my v when you choose elements from v it will have a certain degree and therefore you can choose only up to that many degree basis elements to write as a linear combination right is that the concept yes sir and the beyond that yes, there all the terms all the coefficients will be zero no no you don't need in fact because you need to write it as a linear finite linear combination only so you don't want to play with infinite sum here that is for sure infinite sum is complicated as you can see in your you know series in your first year calculus when you talk about series when you talk right a infinite sum you need a notion of convergence correct you talk about partial sum then you talk about uh, you know uh, the partial sum how this converges and uh, uh, so you for convergence you require some certain topology uh, which you simply uh, we use it in calculus without much discussion of the topology of the uh, uh, the r or modulus but uh, in general for arbitrary space you might need to define such topology okay so a vector space in fact i'll i wanted to tell you few things i'll just tell you quickly a vector space in a vector space you cannot talk about continuity because uh, you know continuity tells you that uh, pre image f mapping is said to be continuous a function is said to be continuous if the pre image of open set is open but there is no way one can define open set unless you have some certain topology or how to define a neighborhood uh, those concepts uh, leads to the uh, the understanding of continuity and many other which required the distance and all this so basically once you learn vector space the next step would be you introduce metric on it so it's a metric space becomes and then uh, you introduce a uh, norm then inner product and luckily euclidean spaces unitary spaces all are, have this special uh, all these structures are there in those spaces okay and therefore we can simply use it 
anyway i'll uh, there are many things we can talk about in this direction so i'll just uh, stop here uh, to see if you have any uh, question or anything to be asked sir uh, yes sir you said that in the set of all polynomials uh, like uh, if we take any polynomial so we can uh, uh, we can write it as a linear combination of uh, some finite elements uh, of s right but yes. Uh, yes. in set of all polynomials uh, there can be a polynomial which have infinite uh, degree right so can't we take no no, no. when you see when uh, when we say a polynomial that means it has a degree finite degree if you say a polynomial with infinite degree then it's not a pair is it's called a taylor if you look at the taylor series the taylor series is not a polynomial unless you truncate it somewhere then we call it taylor's polynomial so when you say polynomial that means it has a degree uh, which is finite did I, did i answer you correctly or uh, yes sir yes so, so uh, yeah. like uh, it, uh, it will happen in all the cases like if we take any vector space of uh, infinite dimension then there exists some hamel basis uh, which will oh, this, yeah that that is due to jorn's lemma one can prove or so using jorn's lemma one can prove that every vector space has a hamel basis but construction of hamel basis may not be easy okay Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. John Slema. John Slema gives the existence of Hamel basis, but that does not provide the method of constructing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir, so much for expl explaining this beautiful concept. Yeah. And it was, it was a really no great, very much great, sir. Sir, uh, one thing, not will you, hello? Yes, yes, tell me. So will you please turn on your camera so that we can take some? Yes, yes, snack. I want, I'm, uh, that's what yeah. I'm planning to. In that case, I have to sh stop sharing my screen, otherwise it doesn't allow me. I, re I request everyone, if possible, please everyone keep your camera on, if possible. I request everyone to keep camera on. So that we can take some pictures uh, for our social media oh, yeah, platform. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Hello, hello, Suparna, is it done? Hello. Yes, Dada. Okay. So thank you, sir. Now everyone okay. can. And today okay, we have thank, another. Thank you all. Yes, sir. And yeah, today, yes, we have, today we have another two sessions from 1 p.m. and from 3 p.m. Today we have another two sessions. So that's, if that's you have good. time, if you have time, please join with us. We'll send the link to you. You, you can send the link. You can send the link. The only problem is I came for a short, you know, vacation for at my home right now. So I don't know how much feasible that would be, but I'll try. Okay, you can share the.